Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. In the previous video, we explored the architecture that will allow us to host a WordPress website, its SQL database and an Nginx reverse proxy on our Raspberry Pi using Docker containers. In this video, we're going to extend this by having a closer look at Docker running on our Raspberry Pi. We'll get started by installing Docker on our Pi. And once we've done, we'll have a look at how many resources are being used up by Docker running in the background as a service. By doing so, we'll get an idea of the remaining resources available to us for hosting our website. Once we've done that, we're free to run our first container, and we'll do so by running the Hello World Docker container. Docker provides this image for us so that we can confirm our Docker installation is working correctly. Once we've done, we know we're able to run our own containers. So what we'll do is we will run the WordPress container. In the background, Docker will pull the WordPress image from the Docker registry and begin running the container in our active window. We'll see this happen and we'll open another window using PowerShell, in my case, so that we can have a look at what's going on with Docker whilst it's running. With the WordPress container running, we're then able to start exploring some of the Docker CLI or the command line interface and we'll explore the necessary commands we'll be using over the next few videos, allowing us to manage and create our Docker-based architecture. The commands we're going to cover are going to be things like how to tell what containers are running, how to start them, how to stop them, how to delete them, but also how to enter a running container. Okay, here we are on my desktop where I've got my PowerShell open. If you haven't been following the videos through from the first one, you won't be aware that I use Windows for my local development environment, and therefore I'm using PowerShell to access my Raspberry Pi through an SSH connection. And in previous videos, we set up a public-private key authentication uh, on the Raspberry Pi, and therefore I set up an alias to make it really quick and easy to connect. So I actually have two aliases. The first one is just Pi. So if I typed in SSH Pi, I could connect using my local network. And if I typed in SSH Pi external, I could connect using an external network, such as if I was in a cafe and I wanted to connect to my Pi from there. So go and have a look at the early videos if you're interested in what I did here and why I did it in particular. But here I'm just going to type in SSH Pi and get into the Pi. So now I'm going to type in H top so that I can have a look at what's running on the Pi at the moment and how much resource is being consumed. So here we go, 65 megabytes. So if we have a look here, we're using 65 megabytes of RAM of the available 926. So what we're going to do is keep that in our heads. So 65 megabytes has been used. Now we're going to look at installing Docker and then we'll see how much resource Docker is using up. So to install Docker, it used to be quite complicated on a Raspberry Pi in particular, but it isn't anymore. All we've got to do is download a getdocker.sh file and then run it. So to download it, we're going to use the curl utility from our home directory, which we're already in. So I'm going to type in curl minus fs sl https colon forward slash forward slash get dot docker dot com space minus o get hyphen docker sorry dot sh get hyphen docker dot sh so that's the command you want to type press enter it'll have downloaded the file it's only a small file so it'll be very quick to download and now we just need to run it with sudo sh get hyphen docker dot sh now this will take about 60 seconds to run on my raspberry pi and therefore generally speaking it'll run this fast on anybody's raspberry pi so i'm just going to fast forward the video and get to the point where it's completed okay great so that's finished Let's confirm that's done correctly by typing in docker minus minus version. And that will confirm installation ha has happened by presenting us with a version of the docker that's been installed. Excellent, so we know it's installed properly. Now docker will only let us run docker at the command line as a sudo user. However, we can change that by adding our user, whatever user you have on your Raspberry Pi, to the Docker group, and we do this as follows: sudo user mod, oops, sudo user mod minus lowercase a capital G Docker, and then 
user in curly braces with a dollar sign in front. So that command there will allow us to use Docker from the command line without having to be a sudo user. Press enter. Excellent. Now this won't work unless we restart uh, our terminal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut down this terminal and open a new one. Actually, I don't need to shut it down, do I? I'm going to exit out, I'm going to clear the screen, <laughs> and I'm going to go back in again. SSH pi, that's just as easy. There we go. Okay, so now that we know that Docker is running, let's have a look at how much memory it's using. So we use HTOP to go into the HTOP utility, and we can see that we're using now 134 megabytes, which is quite a bit larger than the, um, than the 66 megabytes we were using previously. And this is just the Docker service. We've not started any Docker containers running yet, so it's important to look at this and notice just how much we're using. 134 megabytes, that's over 10%, well over 10% of our available RAM is now being used. So we have to keep a close eye on that in our Raspberry Pi. So with that done, let's run our first Docker container by running docker run, by typing, sorry, docker run hello world. What this will do is it will search locally for an image called Hello World. When it doesn't find one, it'll look at the Docker registry for the image Hello World and it'll download it onto our local computer. It'll then run the image and will be presented with whatever the output is. So let's give it a go. So there you go, you can see there it can't find the image locally, so it's downloaded it, pull complete, and then it's run it. So if we go from the top, you can see it here, We're unable to find the image. And that's because, quite correctly, we don't have the Hello World image locally yet. We've only just installed Docker. So it pulls it from the registry. It then, once it's downloaded it, it runs it. And you get Hello Docker and you get this message, which is just printed out. So this could just be a container running something like Alpine Linux, which simply echo, <coughs> echoes out to the terminal this information. It could be that simple. But anyway, the point is, you've got Docker installed on your computer, on your Raspberry Pi and you've run a container for the first time. So let's have a look, see if we can find that container. It must still exist on our computer. So there are a number of commands you can use with Docker. Actually, there are loads of commands you can use with Docker, but the most common ones are like so. Docker container, and then after this, you can start running some particular commands like ls, for example, which will tell us what containers are currently running. As you can see, there aren't any containers currently running. Because what happens is, when a container reaches the end of its life, it shuts itself down automatically. And the hello world image, when a container is made from that, all it has to do is return a, a message to the screen. And therefore, when it's completed its task, it shuts down. However, with the docker container ls command, we can add a minus a to the end of it in order to look and see what containers did exist. There we go. There's a container that did exist. That is still on our computer, and we can run it again, or we can delete it. But the container isn't the whole picture. So if I do delete this container, which is done as follows, docker container rm for remove, and then you've got to use the name, zen, Heldman in this case. So I'm going to type in zen, and then use tab to fill it in. I'm going to remove the container. Okay, fair enough, that's done. So you would think, now the container's been removed, if we were to run hello world again, it would have to re-download it, you would think. But it doesn't. We have the Hello World image on the Raspberry Pi now, not the container, we have the image. So if I do docker container ls-a again, we'll see another version of the Hello World, another container, and it's got a different name. That's because we've created a new instance of the Hello World image, and we've run it, and it's finished. So of course, if I was to do docker container ls, we wouldn't see anything because it finished. We can only see it because we look at the historical list, which shows what containers have run, and we can see it there. And like I say, if you are an eagle-eyed viewer, you'll notice that the name of the container is different. And that makes sense because it's a new, unique instance of the Hello World image. But this means the Hello World image must still exist on our Raspberry Pi then, because we didn't have to download the image again. And of course it does. So, unlike the docker container command, we can also write docker image instead. And this will, unlike the container command, this will show the images. So docker image ls, and there we go, we've got an image. And when we deleted the container previously, as follows, with docker container, excuse my mouse, 
Docker container RM, and let's say we delete this one, which is called mystifying Mendeleev. When we do that, we haven't deleted the image, we've just deleted the instance of the image. So Docker image LS still shows the image. Now, if we delete the image, we would expect it to have to download it again when we run docker run hello world because the image doesn't exist locally. And let's just test that docker image rm and then hello world. There we go. So we've deleted the image. So we can check that's been deleted with docker image ls no longer exists. So if we run docker run hello world again it should download it there we go it can't find it locally so it goes off downloads it from the registry and runs it so hopefully that's reinforced the message that an image is the origin it's the parent of the container and you create instances of that container right so let's go on to the final part of this video and that's running our wordpress container now i happen to know because i've been on the docker registry and i've done this before that there is a container called wordpress so it goes without saying that if I was to do the following, docker run WordPress, I would get a WordPress container based on the WordPress image. So let's give that a go. Let's strike why the iron is hot whilst we understand the basis of Docker. Let's see what happens when I run the WordPress container. Now again, WordPress doesn't exist locally on my PC. Oh, sorry, on my, on my Raspberry Pi in this case. So because it doesn't exist on the Raspberry Pi, as before, it's having to download it. Now, because this is more than a tiny, tiny little file that the run the Hello World um, image is, this is taking a lot longer to download. Each of these components that you see downloading are different parts, different stages of the image. An image is built up in layers, and we have to download them individually and then extract them. So you can see that going on here. I'll just fast forward the video to get to the point where this is complete. Okay, so I've got to a point now where I have pulled the WordPress image and it started running. Now, unlike the Hello World example we had before, the WordPress uh, image has created a container and run it and it hasn't suddenly stopped. It's just run and now my terminal is occupied. I can't get out of it. And this is normal. This is because we're not running this particular container as a background process, which is what we will need to do when we run it properly. So what I need to do now is I need to pull in another PowerShell in order to look at this. So I'll get this one out of the way for now. Open another PowerShell. I'm going to SSH into my Pi. So let's see what's going on. Docker container LS. Now this should be the first time that we'll see a container actually running. There we go. So we actually have a WordPress container called Agitated Keldish that's running at the moment. And an important point to note here before we finish this video is that we've exposed port 80. So we have a WordPress container running on our Raspberry Pi and port 80 is where it's going. Now, hopefully that's ringing some bells. In theory then, if we were to expose port 80 on our router, surely we would expect to see a website. Well, hopefully I will see you in the next video when we're going to poke a hole in our router and expose port 80, and hopefully then we'll see the website appear. And this will be our first example of actually hosting a website on a Raspberry Pi, in this case, a WordPress website. Now there's an awful lot still to do. There's an awful lot to do to make it secure. WordPress won't work without a database and we don't have a database at the moment. But at least what we're showing here is the first part of the Docker architecture and we'll be able to show that at least we can see that WordPress is emitting on port 80 and we can poke it through our router and then see it outside. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please like it if you did find it useful. That's all you have to do. Just press the like button and it'll really help me see that people are finding it useful and benefiting from it. And if you could subscribe to my course, you'll get the updates as I create new material for Raspberry Pis uh, and continue this particular course. It really helps me to continue recording videos and using my evenings to do it. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.